What's up guys and welcome back to the channel, I'm Andy the Middle Age Gamer and this is video number two in our comparison videos with the MWS Z system. Today we're going to be pitching the low entry price double eagle Noveski N4 MWS Z against Tokyo Marie, the original creator and inventor and their latest and greatest the URGI MWS GBBR from 2023. Now as always, before we jump in, usual disclosures ahead. These are airsoft toys, they are not real firearms, and there are no firearms in this video or in any of my videos. I bought these with my own money, and these are my own experiences based on my own experience with these absolute awesome airsoft replica toys. So without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, for those of you who didn't watch the first video, we compared the MWS set system to the more traditional mil spec slash mil sim system of the VFC and its other forms out there because they're all kind of fall into the, the same mil spec, mil sim category. And that was an awesome video. But in this video, we're going to be comparing what on paper looks like apples to apples. But is it? Now, the only way we can do that is to actually get these disassembled and then we can have a look at the inside and compare them side by side. So, while I do that, you have a look at these shooting in their normal configuration. Okay, hope you enjoyed that eye candy of them working in their full normal configuration. Now, while you were watching that, I disassembled them thanks to the overlords at B, i.e. at YouTube. They don't like me showing you how to disassemble them on camera, so just for safety's sake, I did it off camera. Now, let's do what we always do and begin with the lower. Now, as always, let's pick up the double eagle. We'll swap that up there. Now, as you can see, Straight away, there's your double eagle, and there is your Tokyo Marui. Now, get them in. The keen eyed among you will notice there is a difference in color in some of the materials. But what does that mean? Well, let's put the TM one down for a minute and let's take a look. So, I, this really doesn't matter, and I think you guys out there know in your deepest of hearts, but for those that really do want to hold on to old traditionalism. There's a neodymium magnet, steel trigger, steel fire selector, steel bolt lock slash release, and yep, that's two, but there you go. Steel um, mag catch and steel mag button. Your pins are steel and your hammer is steel, your seer is steel, the pin going through the hammer is, and so is the roller. The Z plate is steel, and obviously the firing pin in there is steel. Now, let's put you down for a second. Switch you back over there. Right, here we have the URGI from Tokyo Marui. Now, alloy hammer, Alloy fire selector, alloy bolt stop slash release, and alloy mag catch. Your pins are steel, as you can see. Your sear is alloy, your takedown pins are steel, your roller is steel, your roller pin is steel, and your hammer is steel. But your auto sear or disconnect your trigger Disconnect here, so we can click that down and reset. This whole system, no. Your firing pin, no. But your Z is. So as you can see, I can lift that up like that. So, basically, Tokyo Marui has less steel internal parts than this. 
Okay, so I've got these side by side now, so you can see more closely the coloration difference between the two. On the bottom is the Tokyo Marui, and on the top is the Double Eagle. Now, like I say, when it comes down to it, these are absolutely, both of these are perfect. Do they need to be steel? No. The only thing that really needs to be steel are the locking Z plates. So, yes, that little plate that lifts up there and that one that lifts up on there. As you can see, they both follow the same contours. They are both the same design, basically of Tokyo Maru's latest design, and they do the job. That's what actually holds your bolt back. The rest of all this is just a general function. Yes, it's nice to be steel, but if you have no plans on upgrading the buffer, the bolt carrier and all the rest and putting more recoil on these, which they really don't need out the box, they're really nice and satisfying in their recoil, you know, as stock, then there is no need to upgrade the internals. The good thing that Double Eagle has done is given you the upgraded internals straight away so that later on you can upgrade your buffer tube to fit a metal buffer and then you can change your buffer weight to the correct weight to balance it out. That's how you would tune these systems to cycle correctly. Now, as you can see, everything else is identical. You can see on the front two pins there, if I point here, you have these two little stubs. That's on both of them to stop the receiver from wobbling. So yeah, they have the exact same, I would say, fit and finish for both. You could literally take out this whole Z unit and drop it into here and vice versa. There is not a problem. The benefit of copying it 100% is that you can interchange parts. But obviously, if you are going to upgrade one part to steel in here, then you've got to upgrade the rest of them. Don't just leave it at one, because that one steel part will do more wear and tear to everything else, and it's like a domino effect. So, now that we've got the receivers out of the way, let's move them aside a second, and let's focus on the bolt carrier. Now, as you can see here, I have not cleaned any of these. These are as dirty as they are after game use. These are your standard MWS bolts carriers. Now you can see here you've got the extended or enlarged I would say locking plate there that is made of steel. It's the only part on this bolt carrier that truly is steel apart from the pin that holds the little roller wheel in. That roller wheel is aluminum and yeah there is no oh and the screws itself that hold the recoil gas key thing here that spring loaded and moves. But other than that, that's nice milled aluminum left in the white, and you've got a nice silver plated, or silver coated, should I say, bolt to give that nice chrome effect, which is quite nice. You do have the spring loaded nozzle, both for impact and like that. You will notice a lot of other designs, G&G &G are now working on their 556 that have the same sort of spring loaded bolt buffer system in there. This is usually, What's missing, if you ever see any of the double eagles that are broken, you'll find that that's missing as someone has not put that on or someone's been playing with it and then blamed everything else because they wanted that penetration. So they removed that and then there's no buffer. And of course they're slamming home, it's just gonna break. But like I say, that is a standard one. Now let's get the official one. This is the official Tokyo Marui bolt carrier. Again, not cleaned it after gameplay. Now with this, they have colored the tail weight and obviously it's got a slight different, uh, what we call chamfer, but an angled cut at the end compared to the Noveski. But other than that, it is exactly the same. So if I get your plate in there, it's gonna be hard to kind of show you this, but you can see the general outline of your Z plate there. It's steel just like the other one. If I pull these up side by side, you can just see the exact same designs. Both of them have the spring-loaded locking lugs there for a buffer system as it goes home into battery, allowing for deeper penetration. Yes, there's dirty grease all over it, etc. And yes, you do have your uh, spring-loaded top bit there, which is quite nice. But these are virtually identical. And another thing that's identical is your charging handles. 
On the left is your Geisley charging handle to replicate the full Mark 16 look or the URGI. And here we have the Noveski. Hmm, who's is who's, as they say. But uh, yes, this is the nice super badass charging handle, etc. And they are both identical in every way. You can see in length, you can see in width, in height. It's just color and markings, which is kind of cool. Now, let's go on to the uppers because the other part is in here. Now, inside the barrel is your hop chamber itself. You can, if I can get that in there, there you go. You can see that in poking through into the chamber or the front trunnion of the receiver here. You can see the loading ramp there and you can see the hop adjustment unit that's a separate unit. Now, if I get the URGI and put them side by side, something becomes apparent. It is a direct clone of each other, okay? They've copied it, they've used it, and it works. There is no difference between the two. You could take one out and put it in one and put it in the other. The only thing that's different between these two systems is going to be the barrel length itself. In this, the Noveski, the barrel length is about five and a half inches. It ends about here. And you've still got all that rest of five inches more to get to the end. Um, that's basically done to keep the FPS in check. You'll find in Asia it will be full length, but then you will find it's also shooting quite hot. Here in the UK, they kind of cut that down and put it done right. Here with the Tokyo Marui, well, they didn't do that. This one is the entire length and ends just before the end of the threads on the inner barrel. So you get a full 11 inches of inner barrel which is absolutely awesome. So now we've got a question. To prove a point, will this bolt and this charging handle work in the, how would you say, URGI? And will it work with this mag on the URGI? And let's put all the Tokyo Marui bits inside the Noveski and let's go out and test. While you see that, I'll get these reassembled. Okay, so what do you reckon to them two shooting? That was kind of cool, right? Well, before we get into our final thoughts and put everything together with a nice little bow, as they say, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone out there that subscribed to the channel. If you're not, please consider doing so. It's completely free and it really helps the channel out. You can also leave a like and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified whenever I upload a video or I do one of my premieres. It's entirely up to you. Obviously, the YouTube thanks button is available to you guys. If you want to use it, it's completely up to you. That helps us out. It's kind of YouTube's version of buy me a coffee. You can go ahead and do that if you wish. If you don't, it's fine. Just please consider subscribing. It helps us a little airsoft channels grow and allow more of these latest and greatest airsoft toys for you to see and enjoy without wasting your money on some of these things. Now, let's go over final thoughts. Okay, so as you've seen, they work with all the pieces interchanged between each other. They work off each other's mags and they work reliably. There is no issue. Now, yes, there are some differences internally. It's not so much apples to apples, like I say. The internals of the uh, Double Eagle it has some more steel fire controls, which are fine and good. But obviously that's with you in mind, swapping out the buffer tube to an angry gun one that can fit a VFC or a standard buffer metal, that is anti-bounce buffer in there and heavy spring. But then when you do that, you then have to change the bolt weight or the bolt carrier, depending on what strength you're running at. And again, you then run into the fact that you've got so much recoil that you're not actually holding it on target and you're hitting everything but the target. These out the box both kick absolutely amazing. They are very strong kicks. Uh, they are the definition of what Tokyo Marui likes to call their Desert Eagle, a hard kick. 
Uh, but it's enough that it actually does keep it in line and you can actually hold target a way better. Now, obviously, it's going to depend on you, the shooter. I can't say how good you guys are. I know you're all amazing and I know you're all fantastic in Airsoft and I can't wait to meet you guys. Um, if you're going off to Halo Mill or what have you, hopefully we get to meet up. Now, with that being said, I'd love to know what you guys think. When I compared this to the VFC, the MWS for me was the greatest entry level. But the more you use the MWS, you realize that it's not just for entry level. It's also for quality and, how would you say, people that like to go fast. You get five extra rounds in the mag, which is great across both. You've got interchangeable parts between these two. And yes, you really do get a good value for your money. Both of these are just amazing. Now, the URGI comes in at $629.99. The Double Eagle Noveski M4 is $349.99, almost half the price. And yes, you do get the Steel Fire Control Group. Is it worth the $600, people ask? Well, it depends. If you're looking for a URGI, then yes. It is the best URGI on the market, bar none. Yes, you can buy a GHK for just under a thousand quid for a 10 and a half or a, a or should I say 11 and a half. I think they do the 10 three as well in that, but you can buy one of them and spend nearly a hundred pounds a mag because those that like to say we do it at uh, 39 99 or 49 99, the mags, and then you go looking, they're out of stock, but when they're in stock, the price changes. It's a dirty trick that retailers like to do. Um, so you are looking at expensive with import duties, etc. getting them from abroad because with GHK you have to import everything. There's very little available here. Hell, I've never seen uh, mil-spec solutions so bad in the last few years. It's been absolutely terrible. They're never in stock. Um, but when you're looking at like the VFC, the URGI Gen 3 from VFC is an awesome platform. If you're in the VFC family, then... It's a really good option for you with mag interchangeable. It's your family of weapons. But you don't even get the Magpul stock. So that's going to cost you another 120 quid for a Magpul SRT stock or 100 quid to maybe a little bit less with a Black Friday sale for something like this style of Magpul stock. It's something you're going to have to do and it's an extra cost. And the VFC one retails for around about 650 to 680 pounds, depending on where you go. Uh, some retailers are doing it really cheap, but again, if you import it yourself, you're gonna be paying the maximum price anyway. So it's one of those. Now Tokyo Maru released this, and they give you pretty much everything out the box, just like their Mark 18. I had the QRD sling mount on the front, which is on the Mark 18, and I had to buy that separately on my Mark 18 from VSC, whereas the Tokyo Marui, they gave it you for free, and it was a really good quality one as well. It wasn't cheap or nasty. It was actually very, very good. You know, so you do get a lot for your money. You get a good guarantee from them. It's going to work. It's going to be skirmishable. You're going to get a nice hard kick. You're going to get a good FPS, etc., etc., and you get a good presentation out of the box. But if presentation isn't your thing, like you don't care about that, and you just want something that's going to work and run in that family of weapons that you yourself can play with and upgrade and do what you want with, then you've got the double eagle. So the MWS family is just forever growing, and that is just absolutely phenomenal. So I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below. Which one do you think is better? Would you go for a GHK, VFC, or would you in, sort of like think about starting off as an MWS enthusiast and picking up something like this i'd love to know what you guys are think so let me know in the comments below as always you guys have been absolutely amazing and i will see you in the next one